Welcome to a lesson on solving differential equations using the method of separation of variables. The technique of separation of variables involves rewriting the equation so that each variable is on one side of the equation. So x is on one side and y is on the other. If a differential equation can be solved by separation of variables, it must be in the following form. dy dx equals g of x times h of y, sometimes written p of y dy dx equals g of x. Looking at these two forms here, if we multiply this equation here by one over h of y, and let this function equal p of y, then these two equations would be equivalent. But again, the main idea here is that we want the x's on one side and y's on the other in this form here. If we can do this, then we can integrate and find the solution to the differential equation. So let's take a look at our examples. Again, first we want the x's on one side and y's on the other. So if we add e to the power of three x dy on both sides, we would have dx equals positive e to the power of three x dy. But we don't want this x on the right side, so now we can divide both sides of the equation by e to the power of three x. On the left side, we're going to go ahead and move this up into the numerator, which remember is going to change the sign of the exponent. So we'll have e to the power of negative three x dx must equal, this simplifies to one, so we have dy or one dy. Now that we have the x's on one side and y's on the other, we can now integrate both sides. So we'd have the integral of e to the power of negative three x dx must equal the integral of one dy. To integrate the left side here, we're going to have to perform u substitution, where u is going to be equal to negative three x, so differential u is going to be negative three dx. So if we divide both sides by negative three, we know that negative one third du is equal to dx. So if we write this in terms of u now, we're going to have negative one third times the integral of e to the u du equals the integral of one dy. Let's go ahead and finish this up here. So here we're going to have negative one third e to the u, which is negative three x, plus our constant of integration equals the integral of one dy, which would just be y. We'd also have a constant here, but we'll go ahead and assume that the two constants are represented by this constant here. So now we have our explicit solution. We know that y is going to be equal to negative one third times e raised to the power of negative three x plus c. Let's take a look at another example. Again, first we want to have the x's on one side and y's on the other. We could start by writing this in differential form, meaning differential y must be equal to the quantity y plus one divided by x times dx. And now to eliminate the y's on the right side, we can multiply both sides of the equation by one divided by the quantity y plus one. Notice how this would simplify to one. So on the right side, we're going to have one divided by the quantity y plus one dy equals one over x dx. Now that we have y's on one side and x's on the other, we can now integrate. Well, the integral of one divided by the quantity y plus one with respect to y would be the natural log of y plus one plus a constant, which we'll put on the other side, equals the integral of one over x with respect to x is natural log x plus c. Now this is our solution, but normally you won't see it left in this form. If this equation is true, then e raised to this power must equal e raised to this power. And in this form, we can apply properties of logarithms to simplify this further. Remember, if this base and this base are the same, the left side simplifies nicely to y plus one. And on the right side, notice how we have some addition here. Remember, we add exponents when we're multiplying and the bases are the same. So this is equivalent to e raised to the power of natural log x times e raised to the power of c. So this is going to simplify nicely to x, and this is just going to be times e to the c. 
But if c is a constant, e to the c is also a constant. So we'll let e to the c equal c sub one. So now we can write this as y plus one equals c sub one times x. Subtract one on both sides. And we have our solution, y equals c sub one x minus one. Okay, I think we have time for one more example. And again, our first step is to have x's on one side and y's on the other. This one's going to take a little bit of work to do that. Looking at this quantity here, notice how there is a common factor of y. So let's go ahead and factor this. We'll have y times the quantity four plus x squared times dy minus, this has a common factor of x, so let's factor x out. So we'll have minus x times the quantity two plus y squared dx equals zero. So we'll have y times the quantity four plus x squared dy equals x times the quantity two plus y squared dx. Notice how this quantity contains y's and this quantity contains x's. So we're going to divide both sides by the quantity four plus x squared and also divide both sides by the quantity two plus y squared. If we do this, we would have y divided by the quantity two plus y squared dy equals x divided by the quantity four plus x squared dx. And now notice that we have y's on the left, x's on the right, so now we can integrate. Now both of these integrals are going to require u substitution. Here we're going to have u equals the quantity two plus y squared. So that means differential u is going to be two y dy. Notice how our integral contains y dy, so we'll divide both sides by two. So y dy is going to be equal to one half du. Here we'll use v instead of u. So if we let v equal the denominator four plus x squared, We'll have a similar outcome, dv is going to equal two x dx. But we only have an x dx in our integrand, so we'll divide both sides by two. So x dx is equal to one half dv. So this first integral is going to be one half times the integral of one over u du. This integral here is going to be one half times the integral of one over v dv. So here we'll have one half times the natural log of u. Remember u is equal to two plus y squared. Plus a constant, which we'll put on the other side, equals one half times the natural log of v, where v is four plus x squared. Plus c. Now let's go ahead and multiply through by two to eliminate the fractions. And we'll just let two times c equal c sub one. So we'll have natural log of the quantity two plus y squared equals natural log of the quantity four plus x squared plus c sub one. And now again, we're not going to leave it in this form. If this equation is true, then e raised to the power on the left must equal e raised to the power on the right. And now we can use the properties of logarithms here. Again, since this base and this base are the same, as well as this base and this base, these are going to simplify nicely. So on the right side, we'll have two plus y squared equals, but now on the right side, because of this plus sign here, this is going to be equal to the quantity four plus x squared times e raised to the power of c sub one. But again, this is another constant, so we'll let e sub c sub one equal c sub two. So we'll have two plus y squared equals c sub two times the quantity four plus x squared. Let's finish this on the next slide. So now we'll go ahead and clear the parentheses by distributing here and then subtract two on both sides. So we'll have y squared equals four c sub two plus c sub two x squared, and then also minus two, because we subtracted two on both sides. But for the last step, notice that four times c sub two minus two is going to be another constant. 
So let's let c sub three equal four times c sub two minus two. So now we have y squared equals c sub two times x squared and then plus c sub three. I think we'll go ahead and leave this as an implicit solution. Okay, we'll take a look at some more examples in the next few videos. Hope you found this helpful.